Hello everybody. I just woke up from a little nap and it looks like that. <laughs> um, I had a big headache before and I had a sleep and it's gone. That's rare that that happens. Normally my headaches last for like two, three days, but oh, it's magical when I don't have it. <laughs> um, so I want to continue on some more regarding this whole somatic symptom disorder shenanigans thing. But first, I just want to thank you to the ones who have watched and um, given me support so far. Sorry, I'm still waking up. Um, I wanted to do this, you know, because I wanted to explain what has been going on. There has been people who have asked in other areas, like other social medias, like what has been happening and I thought I'll just tell the whole story and I just wanted to do it in general because I would love to hear from other people who suffer with this disorder. I I had never heard of it before I got diagnosed and I don't know anyone personally who has this or similar so it would have been nice to connect with people maybe to learn some more because I I'm still learning about it um yeah so I'll continue now <laughs> so where I left off in the previous video I had spoken about everything that happened from January to March but I did miss something in March on the 25th of March to the 26th of March I had a um halter monitor on it's um it's like the same sticky things that gets put on your chest and around um, the front area, like when you get an ECG. I had them on me with a device attached to it. So anytime I felt a fast heart rate or pulsating or ache or whatever, I had to push a button and then record what I felt when I felt it and what I was doing at the time. So I did that for 24 hours and I was glad that certain things were happening because during that 24 hours, especially while I was trying to sleep, um, my chest was hurting, my neck was absolutely pulsating a lot. So I'll keep recording all that and I'm glad that it was happening while wearing the device because I, you know, just, I didn't want anything to be picked up, but I've I um, wanted some type of reassurance that what I was feeling was okay, nothing to worry about, if that made sense. Hopefully it <laughs> um, I really am like still like half asleep. <laughs> um, so, yeah, on the 3rd of April, I got the results for the Holzer monitor and all was fine. So every time I had pushed the button and recorded, what I was feeling, nothing was picked up that was of any concern. So that was good. <laughs> Though I felt some reassurance at the time with my halter monitor results, it really didn't take long for me to slip back into negative thinking um, due to my chest still hurting and pounding and the pulsating in the neck, I convinced myself that surely the device didn't work. It didn't pick up what's wrong with me. Or maybe I wore the device at the completely wrong time for it to pick up anything wrong with me. So I went back to my doctor for something unrelated to that. But I, I spoke about my worries still about my heart. And she was kind enough to give me a referral to get an echocardiogram. I think that's how you say it. That's how it looks. Uh, but she was kind enough to do that, which I'll talk about in a minute. On the 8th of April, I went in for the MRI again for my brain. And I was absolutely stressing about it more than before. Not, ju not just because of the bad experience I had um, the previous time when I was trying to get it done. But on a personal note, it's because the 8th of April is the day after my mum's anniversary. On the 7th of April, she 
passed away from a brain aneurysm. So it was just a weird, morbid feeling being in an MRI machine looking at my brain the day after like my mum's anniversary who had an issue with her brain. So um, that was hard. Um, but I got it done. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, I got it done. And, and the dude that was running this one was, was really, really nice. Before I went in the machine, he obviously he could tell that I was, um, nervous about going in there, which, which many people are, um, but before I went in, he, he grabbed my wrist and he he squeezed it and he said, it's it's going to be okay. If you need to be let out, just press the, the button. Um, yeah, I managed to do that. Um, um, on the 11th of April, I went into hospital to get the colonoscopy and endoscopy, endoscopy. I'm never going to know how to say that. Um, and I was very, very nervous about that. But long story short with that one, um, got that done. The preparation for that, though, the prep work uh, the night before, because you got to drink a lot of solutions and empty everything. So that was fun. <laughs> um but I, I remember when I came out of like when I woke up after the procedures I'm I was so out of it <laughs> that a nurse um gave me I think a sandwich I think a, a biscuit and apple juice I I don't remember her bringing it to me though but it was there and I, I don't know if she opened it. I was really out of it. But I, I think I was reaching over to get the sandwich or the biscuit. But I don't remember what happened right then because the next thing I do remember is the apple juice just went everywhere all over the table and the tray. And I remember apologizing so many times because they already have enough to do I didn't want to add to their work but she was so nice she said she said like you're just coming out of out of the procedure so she was very understanding which was nice but I still felt bad I'm gonna feel bad about it forever I don't like causing issues for people I'm one of those people that I think about things from when I was a toddler or really really little if I've caused an issue by mistake I'll think about it for a long time <laughs> Um, so, you know, out of everything that could have hurt, I, I wasn't, ex I thought particular things would hurt after the procedure, <laughs> but when I stood up my legs, I felt like I couldn't walk. My calf muscles were so, so sore. I got told it was probably from the way they positioned me to get the procedure done. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was the colonoscopy and the endoscopy, endoscopy, whatever. When going in to see my doctor to get the results for the MRI and uh, the results for the procedures I had, waiting in the waiting room, my chest was pounding. I felt dizzy. I felt like I was going to faint. I was so nervous. I was an absolute nervous wreck, and I was ready to be told that something was found anywhere. Um, but what I'm explaining, like it's so easy for me to tell the story of what happened and when it happened and how I was feeling, but I feel like the way I, I'm explaining how I was feeling isn't doing it justice. It, it, it was like panic mode every single day. And the focus was always shifting. I was never having a break any day from anything. If it wasn't worrying about my brain, it would go to my heart. If I got reassurance about my heart, I'd go back to my brain. 
um, if if I got a bit more reassurance about my brain and my heart, I'd worry about my stomach. If all of that was fine, I'll think that I had something that hasn't been picked up yet, like in a blood test. I, I just wasn't satisfied. I was never convinced. I was certain something was going to be picked up because I felt so awful every single day. Uh, to, to still have a nausea, waking up every single day, not every now and again, it was every day. It still is happening, but it's kind of not the same. So I'm hoping it's stopping, but it still is every single day since November, early November last year, it's been every day. But during this time of getting the test done and results done, I was a wreck every single day, mental breakdowns, crying, panicking, stressed out, ready to be told something bad. It, the way I'm expressing it just doesn't do it justice for how I really felt. I was, as I said in another video, I was quite manic. Um, anyway, seeing my doctor, she told me that the uh, procedures I had done, my nothing was found in my stomach, so I felt relief. There, she did say that some mild inflammation was like in my esophagus, but it was so, so mild. So that's okay. Nothing to worry about as long as I do the right thing and don't um, aggravate it. But while she said that was fine, my mind went to, okay, well, she's getting the good news out the way first. Now she's going to tell me there's something wrong with my brain. See, I just... <sighs> um. But she said, your MRI scans were perfect too. Your brain is fine. And I got relief. And then I did it again to myself where I thought maybe the machine didn't do it properly. Maybe, um, and please, this isn't a go at anyone doing their job. It really isn't. I know they're professionals, but I did like, like have a quick thought thinking maybe there was a time when they um, forgot to do something or didn't do something properly. Again, that's not an insult. That's just how my brain was thinking because I was convinced that something was wrong. But everything kept coming back okay. And I, I just don't know why I couldn't settle down and just take it for what it was that I was okay. Oh. <laughs> but my doctor spoke to me a bit more and at this point, we're actually talking about me seeing a psychiatrist, which long story short, I did try to book one in, but $250 an hour, I, I can't do that. So, but she's been very, very nice trying to get me into like another type of um, organization where I can talk to somebody still. Because obviously my reactions and thoughts on things haven't been normal. It's been illogical and just over the top, not on purpose. I've never, I've never been through like this before. Uh, so that was the day of getting the results, and thank goodness all was okay. On the twenty third of April, I went in for the echocardiogram. I'm sure that's how you say it. That was pretty straightforward. Um, had like an ECG done and then like an ultrasound on my my chest. And while laying there, I was convincing myself again that something's going to be found with this one because it's like a, a very, very good test to check your heart. So I was convinced that this time something was going to be found. And while I was laying there, my heart really was pounding. My neck was pulsating and there was an ache. And I thought, I don't, with, with any of these tests, I never wanted to be told that something was wrong. But at the same time, it got to the point where I just wanted someone to tell me something was wrong so I could try to fix it. I, again, not because I wanted anything to be wrong, it's just because every single day, since November, waking up sick. It wasn't every now and again, it was every single day. And then new symptoms were popping up and I'd get a test, but nothing was found. Or uh, or having another test to check it again, 
or a completely new test to check new symptoms that was going on, but nothing was being told to me that was wrong. And it was, it wasn't matching. It's like all these physical symptoms with no explanation. And it, it was, it was so stressful. But anyway, I got that out the way. On the 29th of April, I went back to the same place because it was in two separate parts. This one was like the stress test. So I had to go on a treadmill and that was easy. I could keep up with the pace. That was all fine. But what was difficult was the bar on the treadmill. It was too thick that my hands were slipping. And I was so frightened that if my hands slipped completely, I'm going to fall and like go back into the wall. So I spoke to the doctor who was watching me, like monitoring everything. He said that I've already done 90% of this that I could hop off. So I hopped off the treadmill and laid down straight away because that's what I was supposed to do and then get the ultrasound to look at my heart. And again, I was going through it. Like obviously it was pounding because I had just worked out in a way. Well, technically, yes. But my head was like, I'm gonna, I'm feeling faint. I feel dizzy. This is really gonna show that something's messed up with my heart. It just wouldn't stop. <laughs> but they were good. Got that all done. And that is all of April. I'm gonna leave that there just to get this um, posted. It's 8 p.m. here, and I've actually got things to do anyway. So I wanna leave this here hopefully the next part should be the last part I really think it will be but thank you so much for anyone who's listening and again if you're someone who's dealing with this disorder or anything similar that I do not know about <laughs> like I don't know if it's tied in with hypochondria I don't know I'm still learning but I would love to hear from you I'd love to know your story if you want to share and how you felt any advice but yeah, just thank you for listening. I will post hopefully one more video tomorrow than that. The whole story's done. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye.